Hello, folks. Welcome to Friday, another episode of Heavy Metallurgy. Um, you will notice our intrepid co-host, Alan Colson, is not up in the uh, third square there. And um, he's a little under the weather tonight and wanted to take the night off. So Mr. Eric Bauer from High Definition jumped in in his place last minute. Thank you so much, Eric. Did you just say High Definition? Defamation. Sorry. <laughs> You are in high def, though. That new camera we're, is... We're all conditioned to see HD. It's, you know, <laughs> it's supposed to say certain things, but... And Rick, uh, both these guys are returning to the um, the halls of heavy metallurgy, and thank you again, guys, for joining me tonight. Thanks for inviting us. Um, tonight, we're going to dive into... Oh, before I get started, I do want to say, um, if you guys are into Porcupine Tree, Jeff over at... Um, um, Metal Madness 66 YouTube channel is doing a deep dive on um, Porcupine Tree. So if you're not into grind, you want to check out some of that stuff, go on over there and check it out. But um, until then, we are discussing Grindcore, which is a topic that has not really come across this channel yet as far as uh, topics of discussion. Um, probably long overdue. Um it's a style of music, a subgenre of the metal world, but it also has a lot to do with hardcore, in my mind anyway. Um, very influenced by it, especially early on. As it has gone forward, it is splintered and um, fallen into more death metal territories, death grind. It, you know, it, there's a whole. Eric's gonna have a whole bunch of shit to uh, say about this, I am sure, which is great. That's why we're here to discuss Maybe. this stuff. So we were talking about backstage, how it just become a Jason this and, you know, yeah. kind of blurring the lines, you know, where do you go? What, what's, what's considered grind? What's pure grind? What, you know, it's like, what, where's the template? Where's the starting point? Right. Well, for me, I will say that, you know, my first connection with grind is from England, straight up. I mean, even though I'm in a state that has a very influential grindcore band, which we'll discuss later on, I'm sure of that. Um, yeah. You know, I see bands like Discharge and other hardcore type bands kind of sonically influencing the grindcore scene. Although, again, Eric's giving me the skunk eye. <laughs> no, I'm giving myself the skunk eye. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, Rick, what about you? Where, where, I guess for me, the jumping off point is Napalm Death. I mean, Napalm Death, the first Carcass album, um, you know, the whole earache scene was kind of my first soiree into grindcore. I think it is for a lot of people that may have started off in traditional metal as, as opposed to, you know, straight up hardcore or other types of, um, you know, Siege. Uh, I see someone mentioning Siege in the comments, which yeah. I don't own. Or, uh, Siege Drop was Dead. a hardcore band. Yeah, Drop Dead's another band. Another that, hardcore band. Yep. So, yeah, for me, it's the, the earache years, obviously. This band was the one that got probably the most traction because of the label they were on and the time they hit. But um, everybody knows Napalm Death. I don't know that I need to, we need to discuss that too much. But Rick, what about you? Where did it all start for you? Uh, it's interesting you started off that point because I'm obviously younger than you guys. Um, what? Maybe not by maybe not <laughs> by a whole lot. No, okay. Hey, hey who has who has the least amount of grades here? Fucked up. <laughs> I'm not a baby or anything, but yeah, but but, but, right. but here's the thing: like th that whole thing with the earache uh, era, like I was still you know working on getting pubes when those records were coming out, so it wasn't on my radar, and so the actual grind core was not really a thing for me until like the late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, I was still at, deep into death metal and everything else, and I think grind core was still something that. I felt like it was still more in that punk camp uh, with everything else, and it was it was just not something that appealed to me, uh, or just didn't click. And that's what it was. I can't say what's any particular thing that really made it click, but I will show this. I I didn't really, or grindcore didn't start to be appealing to me until I moved to Philly. And uh, Relapse actually had a store uh, down here in South Street uh, at one point, and. Um, See, you, you guys were talking about the, like, you know, Marty, you're talking about the earache. Like, for me, grind was like a relapse thing. Uh, that's where I got my introduction to a lot of those bands. 
which might give you an idea of the kind of stuff on my show. Like if I bring up Relapse, you might have an idea of the kind of bands already in your head floating around, even though- Nothing but Relapse, early Relapse bands, and you'd be safe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so this right here, which is a free comp, but sometimes it just does the job. This right here, <laughs> if you remember this. Yep. And you know, it, it has, Bloodbuster, Hemdale, uh, and some of the bands are not here anymore, you know, uh, are active, Soylent Green, and, you know, but this got me um, uh, to really look into uh, these, these kinds of bands, and one thing that was kind of a shock factor for me was how you could pull entire albums for 30 second songs, you know, and 90 tracks. Like, that's a, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And they come with lyrics, you know, to yep. boot. But yeah, uh, Relapse started it for me. And I kind of looked back and I started revisiting all those other bands. And, uh, but the, the really, really dirty uh, death metal was still not a thing that was, uh, I kind of gravitated towards. I still wanted the more uh, obituary, you know, I was coming off, um, you know, the groove metal years and all that stuff. So it took a little bit of a uh, time to really kind of acclimate to that kind of stuff, but I'm I'm all in now. I'm not in the mood for grindcore all the time. It's not my my main thing, but when I'm in the mood for it, I'm really, you know, kind of uh, yearning for it. It certainly scratches an itch for sure. How about you, Eric? How did I get into grindcore? Yeah, where was your where was your uh, sounding off point? Um, just getting deeper into crust back in like the early to mid 90s um you know discovering bands like doom and their ties to napalm death and carcass and bolt thrower and uh etc cetera, etc cetera. um but also like power violence was kind of a gateway um you know the lazy description of power violence is it, it's like it's like grindcore but more fast um which isn't really true in my mind i don't know power violence takes more from like fast core like siege and drop dead um in my opinion than it does like power violence like when i think of traditional power violence i'm thinking of bands like capitalist casualties which just sound like a really like sound like you know black flag on amphetamines like damaged era black flag like on speed um and probably a little pcp actually uh um so that kind of stuff just kind of got me into it uh just as a blanket but like just blind buying records you know at the record shop because of fucking cool uh album covers um kind of from there delving into like i don't, i would say more obscure shit um because i think grind was kind of like that genre that like nobody really wanted to approach other than various bands uh i mean outside of like the uk um other than bands like brutal truth uh whose first album is fucking first two albums are amazing um that kind of shit and then just kind of digging into like the influences of shit like drop dead and siege like taking that speed and that anger and amplifying it through like thicker distortion and uh beefier drums um you know in horror movies also also horror movies got me into a lot of grind play. um so yeah long story long story that short was all those samples too <laughs> yeah slap a ham that was that was that was one of my entry points was basically if i saw anything on the slap a ham label I was going to buy it. I mean, I went to, I did go to Fiesta Grande back in like 99, 98 or 99. Saw a bunch of those like grind adjacent bands that were mostly just hardcore, but nobody else knew how to really classify it at the time. Like Spaz and freaking uh, Plutocracy, Lack of Interest, Man is a Bastard, that type of shit. Well, for me, that's what's really cool about grind. It's kind of a the byproduct of, you know, several styles i mean there's hardcore there's um crust of course and um 
like power violence, like you said, and it kind of all came together into its own thing, which I think is really cool. And there was a lot of interpretations. I think as we'll get into tonight, a lot of interpretations on the theme that um, bands took it in different places, whether they stayed true to the, the core values of Grind or they experimented with it. Um, it's definitely a um, open-minded. It can be open-minded. It can be closed-minded. But it's it's one of those genres that uh, it's up to the creativity of the artist to see where it goes. And that's what's cool about Grind. And, of course, the blazing speed and intensity behind it. But Shall we begin? Rick, do you want to jump into this? What do you say, Eric? Jump into it. Hey, why don't you get into it? Yeah, we'd like to get some get into it action, but he appears to be uh you're not gonna tell me what to do type of guy. Uh, before I get into it, so there's a coffee house. I've right? been there. I've been there. Vegan right core house, we also don't know. Marty, you've been to South Philly? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh they they do some cool stuff. Uh it's an all vegan coffee shop and very progressive. Even even when you go towards the back, there's all these um sort of a very kind of leftist library of books yeah you can sit down and and read all that stuff uh they um also are, are carry really cool merch like here's a here's one of the shirts i picked up which is uh sort of yeah. really... <laughs> it's a cool place it's cool they had good food too they uh they don't always play grindcore i they i mean they do their share of uh, power violence and kinds of other stuff too, but sometimes they have to keep that at low volume uh, for reasons that are, uh, let's just say, you, we don't want to make everybody too uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> actually go in I there. Would. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's cool. I mean I know I know what times of the day to go, but uh, yeah, I mean they're out there, which is pretty cool. I think that um, as I was listening to some of this stuff and kind of just get familiar and refreshing on some of the music, especially some of this I have not listened to for quite a long time. Um, I was thinking, this, how do you introduce somebody to, to grindcore? I mean, it also depends on where you're coming from. Are you coming from a, from a kind of a punk background? Uh, in this particular case, if you are a death metal fan, uh, particularly of the Finnish variety, uh, there's a really good band that I would definitely recommend to people, uh, and they're kind of like the big they're, they're like the big name in Finland, and that's Rotten Sound. Yeah, this band is they're not like some of those other grind bands. They're definitely not super technical, super pummeling, uh, like a kind of like a picture story. There's there, there are moments where they kind of tread the line, where there are spacey moments, and you can hear chunky riffing. They're quite heavy. Uh, but it's like, imagine, uh, that Finnish atmosphere with a little bit of that, um, Ken, <laughs> uh, so again, I think this would appeal to death metal fans who are looking to get kind of dip their toes into grind and like the little bit of that Finnish sound, uh, I think rotten sound does a really good job. I think I, I got this EP and, um. Uh, this one too. I, I do like their artwork. Yeah, they got some some really cool. Looks almost trippy, almost psychedelic. I don't own any Rotten Sound. I really like their first their first two LPs. Uh, I can't think of the titles. Uh, this one's uh, called Under Pressure. Uh, this one's is Species at War. Let's look it up. Let's be nerdy. They've been around, I don't even know how long. 17 years. 17 years. I don't know if that's true, actually. Don't quote me on that. This sounded good. The last thing they put out uh, was that EP I just showed. So this is the most recent thing. Drain is the rotten sound that is probably my favorite out of all. That's the one I was trying to put. I mean, I like all their stuff. I mean, I, I like that kind of unique take on their, their tone, you know, that other bands are doing. Again, I think... And that finished touch helps a lot with that. Oh, okay. Definitely recommend this band if you're coming from a death metal fan background. All right. Yes, metal. Let's get into some uh, 
High definition. <laughs> High defamation. False. Um, I don't know. So let's see. I tried remembering. I was like, I tried thinking back on like what. I think the first like proper grind record I bought was um, knowing what I was getting. And it was probably, this isn't the same one that I bought back back then, but it's, uh, it's you know, uh, a substitute until I can pick up uh, a vinyl version. That'd probably be this, this album right here, um, which, you know, I got some fucking glare here. That's super awesome. Uh, Discordance Axis. This is their first uh, album. And this is a uh, edition that Hydra Head put out on CD. Uh, I don't remember what label it was on initially, but basically, was that um, a shop that still exists somehow um, called Singles Going Steady in downtown Seattle? And I saw this and I thought, well, that looks like a fucking punk rock record if I've ever seen one. But I also heard of Discordance Axis and knew that it was not punk rock. Um, and it's just super razor sharp fucking grind. It's 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 fast as hell. It's very angular. Um, it's not as dependent on like riffs as a band like Terrorizer or uh, Nausea, the LA band were back in the day. Um, it had a lot in common with like Japanese hardcore. And I think that was probably because a lot of those guys uh, I, I, I want to say Discordance was a band abroad for a long while uh, in Japan. You know, John Chang uh, legendarily being involved in that. And, uh, of course, uh, Takafumi Matsubara, um, who would go on with John Chang to be in uh, Gridlink, which there's some more awesome glare for you. And with Gridlink, I figured I found uh, Hayano Daisuke, which this album is fucking amazing. The super like melodic thrashy grind. Um, this is this is not the band. And then uh, he actually released a solo album in 2019 called uh, Strange, Beautiful, and Fast. And this album is amazing. It's one of my favorite records in 2019. It's fucking stellar it's got a lot of guest appearances from people like in bands like full of hell and other modern uh grind uh acts um but yeah grid discordance axis is probably where it started for me as far as just like straight up not the old school not repulsion worship not carcass worship not napalm death worship like something a little bit different and and new for me at the time i don't remember what year that was it was like probably 96 95 96 when i picked that up awesome but yeah discordance axis legendary everything they did was stellar can't go wrong okay i guess i'll jump in okay these first two things i'm going to show are not grind and i know this but they got me able to appreciate where grind ended up and uh made me enjoy um faster faster music and both of these can be probably considered crossover but uh cryptic slaughter is convicted and Wehrmacht shark attack back oh, in yeah. the day these were kind of you know even though cryptic slaughter was very much a crossover band they had i don't know there's just a punk aggression behind this it just and the, the, the speed of it, the sound of it, it just seemed way more aggressive. Wehrmacht is, is, is very fast. I mean, is it blast beats, you know, traditional blast beats? No, but super crazy, fast thrash stuff. But when this album came around, it made me uh, attach to it a lot quicker because of where I came from with those albums. And, of course, this is a classic. And Michigan boys represent um, no grind band really sounds like this band to me and to me this sounds like the mc5 on speed <laughs> there is a definite you could tell there's a motor city madness that seeped into the guys in this band's you know oh yeah sound by way of just a few what hours I mean, what was i mean grind wasn't a 
a John, it wasn't called at that at the time. What did they yeah. call it? I, mean, I have no idea, but I mean, you fast, hear like Mick years. Harris. Yeah, Mick Harris talking about how, you know, the demos of this shit or the early release of this was a very big influence on them. So, I mean, you know, you could say that, you know, these guys are right on the cusp of spearheading a whole genre with this album. And cheers to that. But yeah, I mean, through crossover, it got me acclimated for for speed. I mean, because I was very much a thrash kid. And, you know, hearing bands like Wehrmacht and Cryptic Slaughter just kind of had me think about it a little bit differently. So when the, the super fast stuff did come up, it was... Those uh, guys in Wehrmacht were all over the fucking place back, yeah. back then. Like, you had Wehrmacht... I mean, you had spastic blur for like a different sort of sound, but also adjacent. But then you had like sweaty nipples, which is like the real inexplicable like funk metal project that those guys were doing at the same time. Um, terrible, but uh, really, really hilarious live. Um, yeah. They're from your area too, aren't they? Portland. Oh, Portland. Right on. Yeah. Portland, PDX. Okay, Rick. All right. So I'm going to show something that just dropped last month, actually, because uh, I've been really enjoying it. So uh, HPGD, Horror Pain, Gore, Death, uh, they pull out a lot of stuff. And uh, I, in my mind, they're kind of doing what Relapse was doing 20 years ago. Uh, and I, I found that um, a lot of these uh, bands, if you look at their discography, a lot of their, what you call the milestones, a lot of the... You know, like Prowler in the Yard, a lot of those landmark albums were in the early 2000s. You know, late 90s, early 2000s was, a, I think, it was a very uh, interesting period uh, when that next wave of bands coming out were putting out stuff. And, uh, and then I'm looking at labels like HPGD putting out stuff like this. Um, and so this is one called um, Imperial Slaughter. Uh, and and this, so this is called um, Vile Slops. <laughs> Yeah, so what's the trick with this one? So I think these guys are from Texas, and they have a saxophonist. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. Um, it's not. It's not very. It's not. It's not heavy. It's not apparent. They don't sound like Psy. <laughs> you know. No. But uh, but but it, it, it's a nice, interesting take. Uh, in addition to you know what the other grinds are, grind guys are doing. Uh. But again, this just dropped last month, um, and I'm already looking to see what else uh, they're going to do on their next drop. But, but definitely recommend this one. So again, that's Imperial Slaughter, and it, it's very it's very modern grind. I mean, as far as the as far as the music goes, other than that little uh, you know addition. But thought I again because you know we're, we went into the classics. I figured I might just talk about something that's very recent and. Kind of spin that around again. Go for it. I almost bought the new Yaukja today, but I, I uh, want to hear it before I spend money on it. The new what? Yaukja. Oh. It's a grind band. They've done a lot of like demo shit and like EPs. They've only got one other full length, which came out like seven years back. Uh, but Relapse picked them up and put out their new one. Yaukja is the name for the uh, alien race that uh, the Predator belongs to. Oh, right on. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. Yeah. I find sci-fi works really well. Uh, so if you look at the thumbnail and you got the oh my god guy, uh, everybody knows Troll that's, Troll that's Troll 2, right? Well, and every time I watch that movie, I'm like, that is the perfect concept for a grind album. You know, think about it. You're turning people into vegetables. <laughs> I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. All right, Eric Bauer. All right. So let's look at a classic, shall we? Oh, yeah. Uh, El Patron by Brujeria. Um, released oh, by Alternative oh. Tentacles, which uh, is why I bought it initially. Um, really knowing nothing about this band. I think when I picked this up, you know, it was like before everybody knew that it was members of like Fear Factory and Napalm Death and fucking whoever else, whoever else is out there. Um, but yeah, I grabbed this and I grabbed Matando Gueros at the same time. Um, 
which is still a pretty great record, but not as just brutal as this fucking record. This record is heavy as hell, super thick. Um, this is probably my favorite Buharia material right here. These two tracks, El Patron and Hermanos Menendez. Uh, so you've got a track about fucking uh, Pablo Escobar and the Menendez brothers. I mean, that was that was another selling point right there for me at the time. You know, mid '90s. I'm like, yeah, I want to hear about fucking serial killers. Um, and I was expecting something like kind of like macabre, uh, like Sinister Slaughter sort of vibe, but not even remotely similar. But uh, yeah, this shit is killer. The uh, alternative tentacles connection really came full circle on the uh, Raza Odiata uh, record, which Roadrunner put out. Um, and Jello Biafra does like the whole like I'm Jerry Brown sort of speech at the beginning of the of the uh, album, and then Bruharia murders him uh, during a public speaking appearance. Uh, it's pretty great, but not nearly as good as this early shit. Uh, this they were will all be, on those politicians. <laughs> this will always be the Bruharia that I reach for uh, over just about anything else. Is there any indication who were the mus musicians on that album on that seven inch? <laughs> No, uh, I mean, you know, they have names like, uh, let's see, shit, eh. my copy's falling apart. So you got Juan Brujo, Assassino, Guerra Sinfe, Fantasma, Hongo, Granudo, Peach, Peach, and Junior Hosey Junior <laughs> Uh, I don't, I think a few of those guys like still go by their names, like Fantasma. I think it's still part of Bruria. Like half of these guys are no longer involved with the project at all. Um, but as far as like who Jesse Pintado was like on this record or like, uh, I, you know, remember like Mike Patton was even involved with Bruria. Um, or yeah, Gould of Faith No More. Um, I don't know who they were, what their names were, but it's good shit. It's super heavy. It still gets, you know, it still gets regular play. Um, it's fucking it's just thick it's nasty dirty and gross sounding i'm really blurry look at that yeah you showed up you held up that uh seven there it goes there we go <laughs> uh but yeah fucking just stellar about stellar uh guitar. about brujeria so you know growing up in a spanish-speaking household that profanity in spanish coming off from like records like that it's actually a lot more funnier uh yeah, well, but it's also way out there like you hear pendejo like twenty thousand times these right. guys well, so when i when i bought when i bought um matando gueros uh i i had i had the, the the cd and the record but then i also bought the tape so i could listen to it at my job at godfather's pizza washing dishes yeah. and i'm one of the one of the delivery drivers who's mexican was like what the fuck are you listening to and i'm like oh it's brujeria and he's like can i check it take a look at and he starts reading the lyrics you know, which were all in Spanish. I had no idea what they were saying. I, I understand like some conversational Spanish. Uh, and he's just like, these are the, this is the stupidest fucking lyrics I've ever read. Like, <laughs> they're not this wrong. Man, this <laughs> man is stupid. <laughs> I'm like, you know, you know, I was at the store. Well, look at the, the one cover. It's, a, it's a decapitated head on the cover. I mean, well, th that's what it was. It was way too vivid. Like, by the time my mom got wind that I'm listening to kind of the more extreme stuff. You know, I can get a Cannibal Corpse album with cartoon whatever on the cover or whatever, but that head was just too real, you know? And I, I didn't want to get to the point where I have to keep hiding my shit. I had that on a long sleeve t-shirt, just boom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Couldn't get away with that. Next up for me, I was going to go chronologically, but I got such a shit mess here, it's going to be impossible. But from St. <laughs> Petersburg, Florida, another favorite of mine. I suck. Misery Index. These Damn it. We did overlap, Marty. Damn it. Although, I got this album for $7.99, and man, it just absolutely crushes and destroys. Well produced, on sound pollution. Um, these guys were, the intensity here on the LP was just as amazing live. I've only, I've never seen them live. I've just seen videos online, and it's great. I mean, super sick blasting drums and the riffs are just so mighty mighty and ferocious i love that record now but when it came out i was like ass suck sold out <laughs> right because i also have the blind spot seven inch that's, it's, that's way, all I have. it's so much cleaner and like 
tighter than anti-capital was and that's the album that made me fall in oh, love yeah that anti-capital on cd misery index though so great great album well that's one less for me to show yeah see i knew it i knew it happened rick already uh okay so this is um let me show some demos and these are oh. re not the actual demos so i don't have the ogs but this is uh blood from germany yeah so now reissued the demos so i like how they went all cohesive with the artwork <laughs> so this is a band that was right there from the beginning and a bunch of kids got together even showing their potion and these guys were doing that kind of stuff over there but the the they didn't really this is before they got serious and their stuff was very i guess they're messing around and very garage sounding it's very raw it's just raw shit. i'm surprised they put the stuff on vinyl but um it's, it's it's a nice piece of history to have i think by the time they dropped their um their full lengths there was a clear change in direction and seriousness and um you know kind of catch it up with those guys you know by the time carcass and those guys came in i think i think they caught up i, I never understood why they never got their due uh like carcass did you know i thought these guys are pretty good too and i tend to like all their albums uh christbait still one of my favorite ones i uh, it's just uh just a kick-ass band christbait is stellar there's there was there were a few albums like it when it came out and still just as few that have really like clung to like just the blasphemic brutality of that fucking record i just looked it up their first demo came out in 86 so yeah they're yeah blood is fucking killer man that's some the last one was Arnold, so they haven't put out anything since 2017 so oh, shit, rick they're about due <laughs> no, we're shitting we're shitting in eric's weedies over here <laughs> no i didn't i didn't pick any blood i figured somebody else would so i did not you're up, sir. But speaking of German grind that's old, we have uh, Depression with Kranich Depression. Never even heard of that. Um, this is a compilation record. Uh, it says on the back, 10-year anniversary album released by Deadly Art, which was one of those, like, uh, they saw like the success that a label like Morbid Records was having. I think Morbid was also based in Germany, that label. Um, They're like the uh, the poorer, uh, shittier version of that label. So like real bare bones uh, stuff. There is an insert. Uh, most of this material is pulled from like 1993, which is when this photo was taken. And then this is uh, from 1999, six years later. Um, it's just really really chunky heavy uh german grindcore in the vein of blood uh nyctophobic um owes a lot to like um some of the more structured uh 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 material um so it's it's almost sounds like mince core adjacent um but it's still grind in that very like wild ragsy blood nuclear death sort of like poor production but real thick uh just killer deadly fucking death metal slash grindcore more grindcore than death metal but as they went on they kind of incorporated a lot more like slower tempos um and like death metal sort of like guitar riffs um but yeah great shit if you like that I'm blood not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not with blood too uh you know i think it became a little more accessible and they kind of streamlined their sound you know over yeah. time it's still yeah. i mean it still kept it pretty pretty dirty overall but it's not like their their first releases were like especially their, oh man uh, yeah, I, I, I show those demos but i don't know if it's something that uh people can really get into it's it's just it's just way too dirty <laughs> way too yeah, wrong. I, mean, I would say if anybody likes blood then this is worth checking out for sure that's a hell of a logo. It's cool. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it looks totally, like a black It's logo. totally not legible at all. Like nothing about it lends itself to being read easily. Although I can see the I can see what it says. So um, I'm pretty sure somebody in the band's like eight year old brother did the did this logo. Uh, I could be wrong. <laughs> all 
All right. Going to the Boston area. Disrupt. A little more on the crust side of things. But um, I always kind of mentally classified these guys as a grind band. Um, members eventually went on to be in the band Grief. Yep. Um, which is completely great, crusty sludge. Noisy as shit. Yep. State of Fear. No, Death no. Raid. And um, you can kind of tell from the album artwork where these guys are coming from. As far as lyrics, social and political... Um, stance on things and also if you can find it get this box set it is amazing this discography has everything they did on it um four albums it's got unrest on it plus all their split seven inches and seven inches it's great absolutely great relapse did an amazing job on this box set it's got a nice uh hard plastic cover over the box itself it's very cool it looks awesome but as far as American stuff goes, these guys are right up the top for me. And again, early, like Rick was saying, early relapse band um, really was kind of driving driving force for that early era of relapse. I mean, relapse had, had a great roster of diversity back then. And um, Disrupt were definitely, they had one thing that set them a little bit apart, not completely, because there's another band I'm talking about later that did the same thing, but they had two vocalists. Um, not uncommon, not unheard of in the grind scene, but it was um, from a death metal. I mean, they were on a, a label that had some grind, but a lot of death metal. They kind of stood out, I think. And hey, to all the 50 people watching, thanks for hanging with us tonight. Very cool. All right, Rick. I'm glad you showed Disrupt because uh, it just would make sense. So there's a band from my own city in Philly. Oh, shit. And uh, believe it or not, there's a band called Crip Sermon. <laughs> the guys, well, two of the members from that band put this out. So one thing that's not clear is, it's Unrest named after that Disrupt album. Isn't Chris I'm, Grigg from Woe in that band too? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, he is. That whole, uh, that whole circle of people is like Crip Sermon, Unrest, Trench Rot. And, uh, yeah, whoa, I think. Great, great album. If this is the only thing they put out, and there's no telling if they're ever going to put anything out again. Uh, but this is, like, to me, perfection. Uh, everything I want in Grindcore, uh, it's as far as, you know, just the, the musicianship, it's just the production, everything. Uh, I also have a theory. So with a lot of thrash albums, if I see a tank on something, it's usually a good tell it's going to be good. <laughs> if this... Gas masks. Oh yeah, That's gas masks. <laughs> yes. When it comes to grindcore, I'm usually not disappointed when I see a gas mask. And war metal. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as far as like modern grindcore uh, uh, drops, this is definitely one to to check out. And this is one of those one and done, I guess. Uh, at at this point, so if they don't put nothing else, so put out an instant classic. My only issue with that record is that it came out like at almost like the same week or month as um the last theories album that metal blade put out and they're super similar sounding except theories is like local so that's who i was listening to at the time instead of unrest ah here you go marty Ooh, what's the surge what's that is that a eight percent uh, white claw i'm gonna oh, go shit. get be right back <laughs> Eight percent white claw. How's that taste? Mm, terrible. Victory. Tastes terrible. Tastes like victory. It tastes like. You no, know, it's not great, but. <laughs> you know, it's refreshing. Yep. Theoretically. Speaking of refreshing, refreshing, you're up next. Oh <laughs> shit. Well, hey, let's keep it in Mexico since we talked about Brujeria. Brujeria. Um. Here's another one. Another forty-five. Watermelon. Anarchus. Yeah. Uh, just stellar, political, left-leaning Mexican grind. Really, like, not to be mistaken for crust or punk at all, because this is a grind record. Um, but they played shows with, like, you know, crust bands, and that's kind of how I became familiar with them. Um, really great fucking 7-inch, man. Probably, like, one of my one of my gems for sure. It's a classic. Uh, put, out, 
oddly put out by Gothic Records, which we were also putting out like early Absu and like other like stuff that like Seraphic Decay wasn't putting out at the time. Um, how to describe it? It's just super dirty, really not greatly produced, but you can still hear everything that's going on on this record. Um, very anti-religious. Uh, it's like take like the um, anti-religious blasphemy of like a band like uh, Columbia's Massacre, uh, and then just kind of impose that on top of grind, and that's Anarchus and the shit fucking rules. I they they actually had their entire discography pressed on tape by uh, Grindfather Productions a few years back. And uh, my copy is unplayable, so pretty cool uh, with with that. But yeah, it's fucking stellar shit. It's, it's 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 great, 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 great. All right, since uh, Festered Awfuls is uh, mentioning them in the uh, the chats, we'll we'll just get down to it. Another relapse early on. Phobia, Return to Desolation. Oh yeah, bro. I believe these guys are from Orange, California, over there and around that area. Yes, sir. And um, Shane, yep. Shane McLaughlin. Yep. And these guys have been a, a force for many, many years. I think they're still going, as far as I know. Um, I've got a couple other CDs as well, but get up, and kill, grind you your the newest one. Fucking head in. Which one? The one in your hand. The other hand. That hand. Yeah. The other hand. I have no idea. To be honest oh, okay. with you, I got it for super cheap at a store down south. But um, if you want to get into phobia, this is a good place to go right here. This uh, decades of blast for me. I think it's got most of their shit on it. There is a bunch of splits and seven inches and full length albums all on here. Um, they're a great band. I mean, obviously. Their influences are, they're influenced by the grind scene. They have a very meaty, full tone, and they're great. I mean, completely great, memorable riffs. And the clarity, the blasting clarity, totally awesome. Great band. I need that uh, the Relapse uh, 45, All the Remains. I need that real bad in my life. I've got that. I should have showed that, actually. Yeah, that should. I, I don't know. I look at that early phobia stuff as just I don't know, really crusty death metal. Like it, it really. I mean, that's where the lines again are blurred. I mean, I've always lumped them in with phobia or with uh, grindcore, but it's like there's obvious death metal influence seeping into that stuff. You know. I mean, they were they were on that whole uh, the the relapse underground series, those forty fives. Yeah, which were all over the place. I mean, you had like mortician and fucking. Uh, um, Who's that fucking embalmer? Uh, exit had, 13, like, amorphous. Yeah, yeah, exit 13. But then you had like fucking phobia and disrupt and destroy uh, with seven inches on those on that on that same series. So good shit. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta brush up on my early '90s stuff. That's you know I've been. We're kind of going more and more back, but I'm more familiar with the 2000s and up with a lot of this kind of stuff. Uh, so here's one. This is from Slovenia. And uh, so you showed uh, something, Eric, with a kind of a black metal logo. Uh, so this is Dickless Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell what's going on there. It looks like somebody holding like a, a burned doll or something. And uh, this Nothing is quite. About that says Grindcore. Nothing. <laughs> It doesn't. I, I thought it was a black metal album. I picked it up at the record store. <laughs> and turned out to be Grind. Holy shit. So, uh, yeah, like I was saying, this is uh, quite technical. Uh, as far as the uh, the name, it's it's a slang term for women who wear police uniforms. That's new to me. Dickless Tracy? Dickless Tracy. Huh. Yeah, according to Metal Archives. <laughs> But uh, it's not bad. Uh, again, it's it's something from that region. I don't have anything else from Slovenia uh, regarding this this genre at all. So that was interesting that there's stuff like this coming out of that region. So quite cool. Slovenia. 
This is Paroxysm of Disgust, and it came out. Uh, let me look up right here. 2014. They actually have quite a few albums. These guys have been around since 97, 98, something like that. Mm. So never yeah. heard of them. I, I had a feeling they were fl flying under the radar f under, for a lot of people. They, I think they're more uh, like a local act, you know, for for what they do. I don't know about distribution around the world. I mean, it says here, put up by on parole. So, again, I don't know how much reach they have, but Dickless Tracy. There you go. <laughs> Dickless Tracy. All right, so, you know, I saw Simon from Explosive Action was on here. I don't know if he still is, but I got something from his neck of the woods. Uh, this was actually, uh, I knew about these guys. Um, a lot of the Australian grind, there's a big, there's a big Australian grind scene, even now. Um it's hard to get here in the U.S. So, uh, and, and it, when you order it from like Bandcamp, like it, it takes a long time. At least when I was ordering stuff by like The Kill and like shit like that. At any rate, I think either Marty, you sent this to me, or Ben, uh, Brain Smasher, sent it to me, um, which is this CD by uh, probably one of my favorite band names ever. Fuck, I'm dead. Yeah, I sent that to you. Yeah, this album fucking rules. Super thick, super heavy, groovy, grindcore. Uh, it's like a modern spin on Terrorizer uh, and Nausea uh, and Repulsion. Um, oh, man. It's, I'll tell that cover I'd buy it. It's, it's so awesome. good. Fuck, I'm dead. I love saying that band name. Um, I, I think they were probably thought they were hilarious when they named themselves that because they're like, Let's name ourselves something that you might say after hearing our first track. <laughs> Fuck, I'm dead. Um, but really great shit. If you're into like Captain Cleanoff or uh, Roscop, also from Australia, uh, Internal Rot, or uh, fucking this this shit, you can't really go wrong with. Another gory mess. It's newer. Came out in 2012. Um, this is this is the dudes looking real cool. Um, it's fucking, it's a great CD. I was rocking this in the car uh, really loud earlier today uh, because it was actually sunny and I had the windows open and a lot of uh, pedestrians at one point were looking at me, banging my head. <laughs> some fuck, I'm dead. You have bang your head differently f for grindcore than you would, you know, something like that. It's just a certain kind of a tempo, <laughs> at least for me anyway. I, I don't know. I, I'm pretty rhythmless, so I kind of just keep it the same, you know. Like, don't don't fix it if it's not broken. I say, <laughs> right? No one's critiquing your uh, head banging skills anyway when you're in the car. No, no. And then there's not holding up a, a, a four, or like a sign that says four on it, or you know. Right. <laughs> All right. Going back to England, I mentioned the two singer thing and extreme noise terror were. Oh yeah. I don't know if they're pioneers in that department, but that's a, one of the Peel sessions. Band. That's their best shit. Yeah, this is their, definitely their best shit. I've got, I think, Retribution. I don't like it as much, but this okay. early shit is great. It's grind, but there you can tell they come from the punk era, the punk and the crust era. And um, absolutely ferocious social, political topics, and absolutely great. This is a great Peel. This Peel Sessions is definitely their best material for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Even know how easy it is to, would be to find this anymore. It's I, I have it on wax. I have the vinyl. Um, fucking yeah, Phil Vane just died recently. He did. Yeah, did not know. Okay, passed away like yeah. last year. Wow. Yep, R.P. Phil Vane. But yeah, this is um, classic shit. UK stuff is definitely. A force to be reckoned with, and um, Rick's next. All right. Uh, we have somebody from Spain, Record Mass. Uh, kind of called that out earlier, so I'll figure I'll show something from that region. So keep, I can keep pulling US all day, but let's just say it's changed things up. <laughs> Hemorrhage. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So you guys have been around a while. Uh, I don't think they need much of an introduction. Uh, they're still doing it quite dirty um quite brutal Very uh, so this, is, this is a cool one it's, it's this this is the um maryland fs 2012 
So this is a live record. Um, so, you know, they, they like to do these cartoony. I think uh, they do their, their own illustrations, huh. which is pretty cool. So, yeah, this is actually, sounds pretty good, actually. That band uh, rules. They're just like a bunch of crust punks playing gore grind. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah I almost feel like uh, this is, it kind of reminds me of, uh, if, if, if Carcass never went slick and just stayed like the way it was with the first second albums, it just never changed trajectories. <laughs> I think I think Groom is my favorite hemorrhage, but I also like uh, Apology for Pathology. Yeah, uh, my uh, my one nephew I actually bought him a, a hemorrhage record as his first sort of a uh, grind, gore grind, just to see how he how he liked it, and apparently he did. So I figured, let's try hemorrhage. That might be the one. <laughs> Safe bet. All right, Eric. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Speaking of gore grind, general surgery, oh, great, yeah. good stuff. This is uh, all of their demos, their first, their first three demos. So, erosive offals, pestiferous anthropophagia, and internecine prurience rehearsal. Um, it's a bootleg, double seven inch, uh, but not easy to find um and i mean i don't really know what i could potentially say about general surgery that hasn't been said by somebody who's a little bit more well spoken on the topic than i am um you can just tell by that logo what they wanted to sound like yep if you can't figure that out then <laughs> i can't really help you um it's very obvious on this album where they were calling their influences um i really like necrology the uh yeah the full length that came out uh maddie carkey does he sings on that doesn't he maddie carkey from December? Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um but i think this is better uh necrology is just like the scummy sort of death metal that i think carcass kind of went to with symphonies of sickness um after reek uh this stuff is up there with reek uh, in my opinion, and a lot of people talk shit about Reek, but that album rules. Reek of Putrefaction is fucking killer. It sounds uh, so is, bad. <laughs> this is right up there with Reek of Putrefaction. Sounds a little bit better for my money, these demos, than Reek of Putrefaction did. Um, absolutely mandatory, uh, essential war grind. Uh, just fucking awesome. These demos are, they would never get to the extremity and like, um, I don't know, just like urgency of these demos. Um, yeah. Yeah, that 10 inches necrology and it rules. Um, but again, it's more of a death metal album than these demos are. I've got that necrology on seven inch and uh, a CD of it, which is weird. I, they must have released it, added tracks to it and put it out on 10 inch. Well, it originally came out, Relapse put it out as, with that underground series. Yeah. On seven inch. And then it came out in an expanded 10 inch edition uh, in like the 2000s sometime. Yeah. Um, I have the tape, the Underground Series tape version of it on Relapse. Um, it's great. It is, I'm, I'm not talking shit about it. It's, it's an awesome album, but the demos for me are like where it's at. Chef's fucking kiss right there. Okay. And if I'm like being honest, I'll take that over you know, anything by Zoomed or Impaled any day of the week. Although I do really love the early Impaled shit. And I like Exhumed quite a bit as well. But yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, they perfectly emulated the carcass thing for sure. Yeah. Uh, for me, this is an amazing grind record. More on the death metal side of it maybe with the super clear full production, but Inhale, Exhale by Nazem. This is my favorite by them. I mean, all their shit is really good. But uh, this album just absolutely destroys from beginning to end. Um, saw them live once, Milwaukee Metal Fest. They were great. Um, really super heavy weighted, weighted riffs, but a lot of memorable um, hooks in this stuff. Horses that stick, mixed with the grind aesthetic. Exceptional album. Absolutely exceptional. Rick. 
get my button straight here. <laughs> um, since you showed Nazem, uh, I think that anybody who's a fan should at least pick up this grand finale compilation. Yeah, it's good. It's cut off, so. I have that LP box set. Nice. Oh, yeah. Which it's is awesome. Like, it's, like, it's a nice it's way to end. It also has a, has a in memory of there, so those who want to see. Yeah, that's when they disbanded in 2004. Yep. I saw but, them in um, 2007 or 2008, and they had the dude from... Um, Nice. They had the dude from uh, Rotten Sound doing vocals because of uh, because you know um, what's his name uh, no longer with us. But well, since you showed General Surgery and Nazem, it, it just makes sense to pull this up because it's got members. From that fucking band. album rules. It does. Rule. Nobody talks about that record, dude. It's Thank so you, Gurgling Gore, for reissuing this. <laughs> oh my god! When did that reissue come out? Because I need to cop that stat. July fourth. That, that's when it dropped. Back. It's probably fun. gone. <laughs> it's what people, people like me too. I love that comic book style artwork. It yeah. just draws me right into. <laughs> Killer logo too. Like the way it's drawn. Perfect. <clears throat> yeah. So, we gotta bring it full circle. Are you done, Rick? Is are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right on, Eric. We're not. Hey, nobody <laughs> in the U.S. has that. Great. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Fucking <laughs> swell. Fifty dollars for a tape. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's 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 stay old school. Uh, Nineteen ninety three, Sweden. Uh, Mastic Scum, with their first EP, oh, yeah. Ephemeral Cerebral Butchery. Um, Mastic Scum would kind of go on to be more like, uh, what was that fucking stupid like, razor grind or like hydro grind that like Lengche. Uh, kind oh. of like developed the sound for, uh, but this is just straight up filthy Swedish grindcore. Um, a lot of it sounds very death metal adjacent, uh, you know, but it's kind of hard to put out a grind record in 1993 and not sound adjacent to that uh, to that genre. Um, this album though is just five songs, one of which is an intro. Uh, but it is just fucking stellar. Um, my favorite thing Mastic Scum has ever put out. Definitely the dirtiest, most underproduced, and poorly played thing that Mastic Scum has ever put out. Um, they're still around. Uh, I don't remember when their most recent album came out, but it's been within like the last 10 years. Um, and just, you know, still good. Uh, in terms of like that sound, like if you like the really overly produced stadium grind of like Afgrund or uh, Squash Bowels, like what they kind of turned into, uh, Gadget would be another one I see. Human Falafel just mentioned them in the comments. Um, but yeah, this Mastic Scum is fucking killer. And they put another out a tape compilation was... in 2019. Their last full length was in 2013. All right, see? Yeah, so still kind of active but just fucking great uh definitely and also if you find it it's usually cheap it's not like an expensive record Massic scum he said uh jürgen says they're from austria austria why did i think they were from sweden probably because i don't know what i'm talking about okay since eric mentioned them Let's talk about squash bowels. <laughs> this this album grind 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 grindalism. I can't say it. It's like <laughs> alcoholism, but with grind on the front. I can't. I've had enough drinks, so I can't say it. But I listened to this album today. Holy shit! The Polish equivalent to Nazem's Inhale Exhale, except maybe a bit more vicious. The production on this is pristine. It sounds so. The guitars are so clear so heavy and it's just absolutely crushing um i also have love songs i also have their uh seven inch audio terror cd comp i also have a handful of seven inches as well but that's a weird band man because they they got really tight and really like in sync with each other this is super tight yeah 
perfect. But you go back, you go back, and it's like they they were like channeling like Dead Infection with their early shit. Yeah, yeah, it's really sloppy gore grind in the early on. This here, like I said, this reminds me of Nazem. It might be the pristine nature of the production, and just you know, there there's obvious death metal influence here, but it's just so it's piercing and destructive. Really great grindcore for me. Yeah, it's good shit. So, a lot of these bands have these influences. Like Nazem is a huge one. Uh, you know, bands like General Surgery come in, and you know, the, like these bands who influence a bunch of other bands. Uh, there's when when you go to Japan, uh, they're like a different animal <laughs> when it comes to a lot of stuff they put out. And uh, I remember when I first got wind of this comp, there was a band on here uh, that got me really curious because their sound was not like what everybody else was doing, and that would be. CSSO. God damn it, Rick. <laughs> I've got a 7-inch with that. Is that the 7-inch? I've got that. Yeah. Yeah. Clotted this symmetric is symmetric sexual organ or something. Oh, my is God. Clotted it's like symmetric crazy. sexual organ. Yep. Sometimes it's a little psychedelic. It's a little bluesy. It's a little a little here and there. It's all over the place. Uh, but it's, 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 still, it's still brutal as hell. Um, but great band. Uh, I know they, they put out that... Uh, the classic are you excrements with a question mark <laughs> that fucking album is killer i love that record man so good. i thought that I wasn't a, i wasn't a floor roaring that was you know it's just something about it this is this is a certain kind of humor that i really enjoy that's another thing that gravitated me towards you know grind and gore grind it's just like just a certain kind of a uh, lack of apology you know yeah it's, japan you know. has a fucking great grind scene between them and like um fucking viscera infest and like SUB 110 or whatever the hell that SUB 11. Um, that shit just you stole my thunder. I was oh, this is uh, <laughs> it's a great band though. And again, they're they got their own thing going. I love their sound. Great, great anime grind. All right, Eric. Oh, is it me? How about some drum machine grindcore? <laughs> uh, Wadge. Oh, With, uh, the Road to Hana. Wadge are a project from um, Newcastle, Ontario. Uh, and, you know, uh, they're all about what this cover shows, a uh, Hawaiian, Hawaiian uh, heritage. Uh, it's kind of a joke, but um, one of the things I really like about Grindcore, and, and I was thinking about this today, is that unlike um, in death metal, uh, and even like crust punk and hardcore these days, there's not really so much of a gatekeeper mentality when it comes to Grindcore. So like if a band wants to be goofy and just do a bunch of fucking joke songs on a record, it's okay. Nobody fucking loses their shit and calls them untrue uh, yeah. because they're taking the piss out of something. Yeah. Um, like they have an album with like Don Knotts on the cover. Uh, <laughs> this album though is, it's like, imagine uh, agoraphobic nosebleed like PCP torpedo. Uh, is it PCP? I don't know, fucking human body stuff with dope or whatever. Um, it's like that sort of like grind, like just real, like bass heavy, the drum machine, they use the drum machine because I'm pretty sure no human could keep the pace that the drum machine does on this album. Um, but then there's breaks where they like bust out into like some like fucking Elvis, like beach movie, like music, like it's, it's fucking great. Yeah. Frozen corpse stuff with dope. That's, that's the album title. Um, but yeah, Wadge. Uh, several albums. This is one of their first full lengths um, on Regurgitated Semen, uh, which is a great label. I became aware of Wadge because they had a couple digital only releases that were put out by Grindcore Karaoke, which I got really into like digging deep into their shit for a while some years back. Um, it's really good, really cool. Um, Hawaiian Grind. There's, there's a lyric on the inside. Um, down from the mountain on the back of a boar, fearless Menahane screaming for war, 6,000 warriors side by side preparing to die for Hawaiian pride. Uh, 
just fucking, you know, you get a lot of songs talking about like cannibalizing Captain Cook's expedition and that sort of shit. Like it's it's great. Isn't enemy soil have members of uh, soil and green in it? I don't think so. No, I could be wrong there. Anyway, I'm up, and since I'm wearing the shirt, probably one of my favorite, one of my top twenty favorite albums ever. Yeah. Terrorize the World Downfall. Maybe a little more on the death metal side of things again with production, but I mean this is a. I guess uh, I heard Eric coin the phrase "lightning in a bottle" because this album is great. It's got David Vincent on bass, Jesse Pintado, who went on to be in uh, Napalm. He's also in Lockup. Yeah, in Lockup. And Oscar Garcia on vocals. Again. From, terror, from Nausea. Yep. And absolutely some of the most catchy, memorable grind tunes ever written. Songs are so well written. Um, they, they get in, they get out, they say what they got to say, and they say a lot, which is great. I mean... Uh, I, they say a lot musically, I should say, because, like I said, there's a lot of motion and movement in these songs. The mix of the grind beats in with just the more plotting, heavy grooves. It's just a great fucking album. I love this record. Classic. And their their latest uh, album, Caustic Attack, kind of sounds a little like they're trying to get back to that with a completely different lineup other than Pete Sandoval. But I kind of dropped out our new stuff. But if you said it sounds like they're like that, Caustic definitely... Attack has got a um, it's got a feel that kind of wants to be back to where they. It's not going to be as good as World Downfall, but it's it's good. It's a good album. That Terrorizer is a perfect record. Man. It's per- it that, really is perfect. That and um, the first Brutal Truth, like those two albums together, perfect production, just killer, just grind. It's yep. fucking, yeah. Cool. I'm going to go use the little boys' room, so talk a lot. Yes, it is Pete B- Sandoval, Evan Bonner. Boner. Pete? Bonner or Boner? I don't know. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. All right, let me pull something out. So oh, I pulled up yeah. the specifically uh, yeah. because I wanted to show the, the insert. <laughs> so as you, as you all know, Agoraphobic Nosebleed, it's kind of like, the I guess, the more technical end of pig destroyer you know scott hole's other baby um so this one right here which is um they say angry delta nine i think it is this is this is crazy because i think after the last album they they kind of just cranked it up to 11 <laughs> with this one and decided to try the uh, the 30 second song format uh with 99 tracks and um so, here you go. That's your lyric sheet. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that uh, that art style. I'll kind of carry it over to, like, uh, like the noisier stuff. I don't know if you're familiar with noisier. Um, uh, nah. It's killer shit. That's cool. Though. I mean, I do love the artwork. That's another reason why. I kind of, this is definitely not my favorite. Uh <laughs> But it's something you put on, just kind of like, like, and like in the background, it's just completely insane. But it, you know, because the, the songs are not structured like their other albums. You know, I just remember the first thing I saw from uh, Agoraphobic Nosebleed. I saw the song title uh, "PCP Torpedo," and I was like, "Yeah, I need to hear this band." <laughs> I mean, I guess between this and and. You know, Pig Destroyer, I mean, they kind of go hand in hand. I mean, they all have their own reasons why, you know, they exist, which is which is cool. Okay. Eric. Um, okay, so, I don't know, this is kind of probably where, like, the inspiration for bands like fucking Wadge and Agoraphobic Nosebleed came from, and that would be Exit 13. Oh, yeah. With, uh... Don't spare the green love, which I can really identify with that with that sentiment. <laughs> um, we'll just we'll just say that this the first time I ever heard a gore or not a gore, the first time I ever heard Exit Thirteen. Uh, a buddy of mine was working at Tower Records, and he picked up uh, this and the album that followed. This is a compilation of like their early shit, like their EPs and stuff like that. Um, and he blew out his car speakers, uh, blasting uh, the noise track on uh, on the on the, the proper full length. 
um, which uh, I didn't know was possible to do with music at the time, uh, to blow out your speakers because you were listening to something too loud. Uh, but with Exit 13, like all that like drum machine and like uh, uh, achieving another realm of consciousness through the power of pot um, and drugs and psychedelics like DMT and LSD and psilocybin, uh, all that shit really at the time really spoke to me. So yeah, Exit 13, and then uh, not as dramatically influential as Exit 13. This is a twofer. I'm, I'm showing two. Uh, Fight Me uh, would be the album uh, Low Flux Tube by Old, Old, Old Lady, Lady Drivers. <laughs> um, this shit is some of the weirdest most like out there spaced out grindcore of the 90s um i hesitate to even really call this a grindcore album uh it's definitely adjacent and there's definitely callbacks to the uh older old material um this is just a fucking weirdo record man it's industrial it's grindcore it's psychedelic um it's it's crazy uh and i love the influences seeing the influences of Exit 13 and old on the modern geography of grindcore, which we're going to get into later when I'm not showing two uh, picks for one pick. Well, it's kind of why I pulled a, a glorified nosebleed because you mentioned the drum machine. Like that's also, you know, what I forgot to mention. It's just kind of like him playing with the knobs and see what, what can this thing do and how fast, uh, you know, how many temples per minute <laughs> can we get this to go? It's crazy. One interesting thing about Exit 13, not only is it uh, Bill Yurkovich, who was a co-owner of Relapse back in the day, there was yep. also um, this guy, whoop, wrong wrong picture here. Let's pull me up here and do this. Uh, Patrick McCann, I believe is his name, he went on to form the record label Redstream Records. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was also in uh, the weird experimental drum machine band called Kandiru. Yeah, that band was weird. Also, I think the drummer in that band hidden. Anyway, I'm up next. Am I up next? I'm up next. Eric's talked about him numerous times. Brutal truth. Oh, yeah. Uh, extreme conditions demand extreme responses and need to control are, like Eric said, two pretty damn near perfect albums. But this is a prime example of musicians taking grind into different territories with experimentation while not really straying too far away from the grind aesthetic, maybe embracing it and adding more experimental um, ideas into it. As this band went, they got a little crazier, a little weirder. The Sounds of the Animal Kingdom was a pretty huge record for them at the time. It's because they got way more into pot. They got way more into pot. Dan, Dan Looker on bass and uh rick hoek on drums who was also in the band total fucking destruction which is another okay, straight up crazy grind band that's that great it's so good the shit was so good and seeing these guys live was always a force to be reckoned with um but this is a band that was on a steady evolution they let go of their inhibitions and just started experimenting and which made their riffs, I think, a little harder to digest as they progressed. But, um, man, if you're along for the ride, it, it's a pretty cool, interesting... I, that's a band that I haven't listened to in a while, to be, to be completely honest. But I, did, you know, I didn't get them at first. It, it, they're just, they were just too weird and different for me, just uh, from the other this, stuff. This is, not, pretty, this is pretty straightforward, just straight-up grind. It's just yeah, really well that heavy. That's extreme conditions demand extreme responses. It's like... The perfect death grind album like i would say it's the perfect sister album to uh napalm death's utopia banished like yeah. same sort of like sure sort of vibe they yeah, weren't on my radar until um the, the sounds of the animal kingdom came out and that's when they because they were marketing that heavily that's and when they got picked up by relapse was for that record that why? Um, and before that it was eric like need to control i think it's great but like i i i compare need to control the misery index by asa um, it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot sharper. It's a lot more like thin sounding, dare I say thin sounding than extreme conditions demand extreme responses. But the thing that sells need to control for me 
is the cover of the Germs Media Blitz. Like, yeah, I love the original version of that song, but Brutal Truth does that cover version perfect. Like, that's how I want to hear Media Blitz is a grindcore song. Like, fucking rules. One other little interesting factoid: um, this picture on the cover, this guy. I met him when I was hang I was hanging out with these guys a bit back in the day, when they were in the Lancaster. This is their UPS driver. <laughs> I met the guy. Was he wearing a suit? <laughs> he went, no, when I met him. He was wearing his Browns. I was there during UPS delivery, and uh, they introduced me to him. He's like, "This is the guy that's on Sounds of the Animal Kingdom." I'm like, holy shit, you're right. Yeah, big. He's a big, muscular dude. Yeah, he was very proud of it too. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, I was. That was me." So cool. Yeah, that's an iconic album cover. Uh, I'll be right I'm, back. Gonna, I'm gonna throw a split here, uh, so because it's that good, and it's got. Sort of like a, a band that's been around in a while and one that has it. And that is Transient. And you all know Noise. Nice. And yeah, I think this is a, like, a, like a really nice marriage. It's not really a split. It's more of a collaboration. You know, come, coming together and really here, show, here showing everybody's vices. <laughs> I'm one of those people that will buy anything related to Man is a Bastard or Bastard Noise. Like... That yeah. shit, Neanderthal, Rorschach, um, not the not the hardcore Rorschach, but uh, the pre Neanderthal shit. Pretty cool photo, man. She is a screamer. <laughs> that uh, actually the last uh, transient full length. It's pretty good. Definitely. Uh, I don't have that split. Um, now I feel like I need it. That's good. It's definitely. Um, it, it, it definitely adds uh, to their sound. I, I I hope they put out another one just like this because they work really well together. Uh, do you like uh, Do you like Amps for Christ at all? I don't have any of their stuff, but yeah, I've checked so them out like before. More man is a bastard members involved, but it's like acoustic weirdness. Like it's it's strange. Who did I miss? Transient ambassador noise. It's more of a collaboration. I mean, I called oh, yeah. it. Cool. Okay. Cool experimental noise, grindy stuff. Sweet. Well, yeah. my next pick was going to be Brutal Truth Need to Control, but Marty stole it. Sorry. You can talk about it more if you want. Like a jerk. <laughs> like a jerk. I told you. I told you. You what thought I was like, oh, no one's going to get my stuff. Hey, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Hey, let's go back to Mexico. Let me take it out so we can avoid that, that glare. Uh, my favorite, probably one of my favorite releases from a Mexican band, uh, Disgorge. I just ran upstairs to grab this, you bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Chronic Corpora no, Infest. I've seen that cover. <laughs> um, this is the original tape version put out by... Uh, Oz Productions, some yeah, Oz Productions, which was like kind of like New American Line, Mexican metal label. Um, I'm not going to disclose what this what this cost to add to my collection, but uh, that's not what this is about. This album is just some of the brutalist. That's not even a word. Brutalist. I'm gonna. <laughs> it works. Uh, the most brutal. <laughs> brutal. Most like depraved, <laughs> depraved and grossest gore grind brutally ever produced, in my opinion. Um, but one of the things I love about this record is that it's super atmospheric. Like there'll be moments where, like all of a sudden, like the music will stop and it'll just go into like some weird like synth passage for a second uh, that completely deviates from whatever came before it. Um, it's just this album's one of a kind uh a lot of people say this the follow-up forensic is their best but i would definitely disagree with that uh, forensic has gotten the reissue treatment from uh parasitic records uh tim from where goat he put it out on his label on tape and then i think the lp came out through um i, I want to say maybe 20 bucks spin but I, I could be wrong about that um at any rate chronic Copra Infest, uh, one of the best gore grind records of all time, in my opinion. 
Um, Here's the, the CD. I have version. the CD version as well. It's on, is that New American Line, Marty? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this album is just, I would, if I could compare it to another band, it'd be like Lymphatic Phlegm out of Brazil. Um, just super atmospheric board grind. It's like almost disturbing and like, even like, I, I'm hard pressed to be disturbed by music. Even like fluids, like I kind of find like more like kitsch than like disturbing. But like this Discord stuff is really unsettling, uh, which I also find that lymphatic phlegm to be unsettling. Um, and a lot of not a lot of gore grind bands do that for me. So I got to say that forensic. I used to own a promo of that, got rid of it. It's just one of those covers I just didn't want in my house, and there it's isn't so many. Gross, things, dude, there's not many things I can because I can. I've got a pretty thick stomach when it comes to that stuff. That, that cover is foul. It's not. It's just not right, man. It's I'm another one it. that uh, Nemorian, uh, Nemorian. They just broke up the yeah. first album with the dead girl on it. I can't. Yeah. yeah, fuck that band forever using that cover. It's just fucked up. But anyway, I digress. I'm up. <laughs> But yeah, that's Discord. Get into it. We <laughs> get into it. This is kind of borderlining on the absurd, and we're going to Japan, and in the same vein as Discord. But someone mentioned them in the comments. I had to grab it. Viscera Infest. Oh, I mentioned that. You did? Yeah. Someone yeah. in the comments did too. This is uh, Verucus Carcinoma. Yeah, this is probably the fastest drummer I've ever... I mean, there's video of him playing like uh, video drum cams of him playing he's got this like a three-piece set and this guy is so precise and so fucking fast it, it borderlines on absurd it, it doesn't even seem real but um these guys the vocals are super sick but also kind of borderline humorous he's just <laughs> kind of mumbling his way through it but um absolutely the only thing crushing death grind the only thing I've got from them is the uh, the live album that came out on Head Split, the the live at Asakusa Death Fest in Japan from like 2017. And I'm not huge on live records, but man, that thing fucking kills. Yeah, and they do a thing. They don't have a mosh pit. They've got like a, a cockroach bit where everybody lays on their back and twitches like a co dying cockroach. It's kind of humorous. But yeah, Human Falafel mentioned Butcher BC, another fucking great. Japanese grind band, just killer. Okay, Rick is back for the attack. Every time you guys say forensic, I keep thinking of that Mortal Decay album. <laughs> uh, so, speaking of shocking cover art, so I'm from a city where a band known as Pissgrave, you know, tends to tread that line. Yeah. Uh, I'll show a, uh, a band from Philly, but it won't be that. <laughs> so this is a. Uh, Queer Grind, and uh, this band is called HERS, oh, uh, the HERS Collective. H-I-R-S, that shit rules. So this is the, the, the first hundred songs. <laughs> 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 the, the second hundred songs. They had uh, they had some shit on uh, Grindcore Karaoke, I think, uh, a couple digital-only releases. They've had a lot of like little releases and stuff. They did a collab with uh, Thou. Uh, so this is, this is their motto, No Gods, No Cops. So there's a little, a little gay fold. I guess that's their, their, their symbol. Great band. Uh, you know, they're all about the, um, the, the short song format. Really fast, really loud, really aggressive. Uh, great grind out of Philly. So definitely... Would you call that grind or would you call that power violence? Uh, yeah, they do tread that line. There are times uh, when it, it is pretty much straight uh, power violence. Uh, I mean, they, they tread all these different styles. Uh, especially on their collab releases, uh, which is not always so clearly defined. But I don't know. In my eyes, I, I mean, when I want Grind Out of Philly, this is one of the bands I think of. I mean, uh, it's, I, I, you know, I got no problem with that popping up here. But, but yeah, they got a lot of Mr. Eric, you're back. Oh, shit. I'm not ready. Uh, how about... Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Some obscure French shit. 
with the most illegible logo of all time. Um, and I, of course, am talking about <laughs> sublime cadaveric decomposition. <laughs> nice cover. Uh, French grind, nonsense lyrics. Nice uh, logo. Entrails hanging off of it. <laughs> yeah, the, you can see the logo better there. Uh, I like how they shorten their name to Scud, uh, which which cracks me up. But this stuff is just killer. Like, I want to say like terrorizer slash repulsion worship, but like tighter and more technical and like produced really well. Um, it's just a fun record. Everything this band has done is super fun. Um, Dare I say fun and grindcore in the same sentence. It's, it's um, fair play. Fair play. It's it's also really weird. Um, like the imagery is very strange. So you have like pictures like that on the inside. There's the band. Very French. Um, it's just, it's really good. It's one of those albums. Somebody asked me to describe what it sounds like. Beyond what I've already said, like I'd be hard pressed to really give you much better of an idea other than just show you these pictures and um, say, take, you know, take it from there. Um, it's really, really good. This album is not that old. Um, they have another one or two full lengths after this that are a bit more recent, but like kind of in that vein of like uh, in Hume, if anybody's familiar with in Hume, oh, yeah. they're also really great. Um, Maybe a little circle of dead children in there, but like not serious. Um, just a fucking great record. Okay, now I'm going to show a record that Eric says is not grind, which I always classified these guys as grind, but <laughs> English Doom. <laughs> crust. That's a crust band. Yeah, this man. is definitely crusty with some grind elements. So this is the uh, Lost the Fight Pro Life Control Sessions. Couple different splits sandwiched together on uh, uh, Agipunks. You know, classic English stuff here. I mean, it's. I know, love it. It's probably more crust adjacent than grind, but. Don't get me wrong, I love it. If it weren't for Doom, I wouldn't have discovered Napalm Death, really. Like, right. you know, both bands played multinational and. That's what that's what got me on Napalm Death was was that connection. Again, it's really good, well written stuff. I think Eric's right is probably a little more crust than grind, but there are definite grind elements here. Crossover, there's a crossover thing going on for sure. I mean, I would be foolish to say there's not. You know. Yeah. Okay, Rick. I'm glad you pulled that because um, again, there's no real defined line there's no gavel that says this is what grind is this is you know what i mean like there's this you play it by ear and there's well, these, like you said there's there's not as many gatekeepers in yeah. in grindcore i think is there a are in... you know some people like you said would label it immediately as a as a crust but you know marty you know uh i would even say you know i i, I you know i could see how someone can you know see it as a as a grind again with cross underpinnings yep um this one right here, I feel like kind of treads a little bit in that territory. So this is from Australia. So if you know Blood Duster. And uh, yeah, but this is more of a of a groove laden type of grind. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's more 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 simplistic, not quite as technical as all those other guys. I feel like this is uh again more accessible for people kind of coming from somewhere else, looking to dip their toes, you know, which, something in that direction. Which blood duster is that? It's called uh lit Linden, Linden, nah. Is that on relapse? Uh, it is. Don't even know who put this out. Obscene Productions it says in the back. It's a check check label. Straight out of North Coast, my favorite. Or yeast. That's yeast, yeast and too. straight out of North Coast are like the only blood dusters that like I'm super familiar with. I also have the one after it, Cunt. I got that one too. Pretty cool. Double disc. Now oh, we're getting Simon excited down there. Down <laughs> under. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
yeah, so Blood Duster. Pretty cool, different, uh, more accessible, but very catchy. Very pissed off attitude. They don't give a fuck attitude for sure. I like that. Back for the attack. So, you know, to, to appease Simon again with some Australian shit. Like I said, there's a great grind scene in Australia. Um, and this is honestly, this album came out in 2013. Probably one of my favorite grindcore records of the last 15 years. Um, Agents of Abhorrence with Relief. Uh, prior to this record, they have a few other full lengths, uh, which are a bit more like power violence, fast core adjacent. So, like, think like extortion. Um, that sort of that sort of sound. But with this, they just went full on grindcore this album rules one of the things that really like initially when i saw this appealed to me was like the swans-esque artwork of the album cover um but yeah this this stuff is just it's feral brutal grind in the vein of like enemy blockade or column of heaven um that sort of type of grind like the first hatred surge or a six brew bantha sort of uh, style of music, insect warfare, if you will, uh, inspired. Uh, and I didn't. I'll keep my mouth shut. Actually, um, yeah, this album is just stellar. It's was my favorite record of 2013. Probably my favorite grindcore record of like the last 15 years. This album is just. It's it's killer. It's unique. Um, I don't think that before that album, they got to the heights of what they achieve on that record. And unfortunately, they haven't done anything since then. Uh, so love to hear something new. Uh, there's like live footage of them playing like squats and like youth centers and it's fucking nuts. Um, really great. Really, really great band. So they're one of pretty, those pretty, one, pretty great. To one quote Larry one David. One thing, that's the only thing they put out. No, they have they have other shit prior to that. That's just the most recent album they. Oh, okay, I'm not familiar with that. Anymore. Yeah, Column of Heaven rule. Okay, I guess he's a co-creator of Chromium. Oh shit! Well, fucking, I love that guy's band. Hmm. Next up, this is the only thing I have by this band, which is incredible. I've always meant to buy more shit, but if you go on the Metal Archives and look up. Agathocles, you're going to see the longest discography you've ever seen in your life because they've no, been next to, next to Unholy Grave, right? And this is uh, if this is cruel, what is Vivisection then? A seven inch put out by Scam. Um, absolutely, they call themselves Mince Core, but yep. it's essentially grind. Um, really well written again, right true to the roots type of stuff and again I've, I've listened to their shit online i'm like oh, i need to get this i need to get this and i just never because it's so much i mean I'm, I'm the type of guy when i get a band that i like i i want to get their shit i want to get it all and i just i knew better and decided not to go down that road because it, i'd be i would be in the poorhouse for sure but how, how do you do it if you find a band like that that has a million splits and eps like you go to, straight for the full lengths first and then oh yeah i mean it full yeah. lengths and typically whatever i mean their stuff turns up a lot because they're on everything Oop, hold on eric Oop. <laughs> Oop, damn it buttons dumb buttons uh hold on <laughs> there you go Oh man. Yep. Absolutely great. Great stuff. It's not super complex. It's just really well done, solid. And they've done splits with everybody known to man, to be completely honest. And this is, my favorite, this, this is my favorite material from, from them. This album is just fucking killer. It straddles that line of like weird, like almost like crusty punk, but like still grindcore gore grind even at points but also like occasionally death metal it's it's a very strange album i'm not sure what delineates a mince core band versus a grindcore band other than i think mince core is more concerned about like animal rights and being anti-animal cruelty 
vegetarian, vegan sort of fucking shit. But so disrupt could have easily fit into that categor- categorization as well. Yeah. Rick. Okay, uh, I'm gonna show now one of those one and done kind of full lengths. So this came out in 2002, and uh, if you guys are not familiar with this band, definitely check it out. Uh, it's, it's called Decrypt, Holy Erotic Rapture. So these guys are from uh, Indiana, and I'm not sure why they called it quits after this, but man, this stuff is a, a really good template of grindcore done right uh, on, a, on a technical basis. It's just that the playing, everything is on key, the production's done really well. Uh, it, it's even got that, it almost reminds me of that Mort of Ferrum, I feel good to cover, <laughs> with all the spaghetti stuff happening. Um, but yeah, really great album. Uh, yeah, I think it was in 2002 this came out. I think they put out a, a demo before this, and maybe I think a, a live release, but that's about it as far as so it's Decrypt, Holy Erotic Rapture. I like that uh, logo. Yeah, I mean, in, in 2002, I mean, a lot of good stuff was coming out. These guys were right in the thick of it, you know. So I don't know what they were pulling as far as inspirations, but uh, I'm tr- I know they were listening to NASM. <laughs> To answer to answer fucking Clifford's question, I think cattle decapitation could just be called pretentious, and we can just move forward from there. <laughs> yep, Eric is educating us all. But Eric is next. Uh, all right, let's go with a classic. This is a recent. A, yeah, this is a recent reissue. Recent, recent reissue. <laughs> Uh, on um, Extremely Rotten, who, you know, are a label of great quality. And that would be this first pathology, or pathologist. Putrefactive and cadaverous odes about necroticism. And uh, it's just straight up carcass worship. Uh, they, they heard reek of putrefaction and really wanted to put an album out that sounded like it. And they succeeded in all respects with this album that album uh, has evaded me over the years i don't own it i want to say they're from poland are they i polish? can look i can look i think they're polish or they were polish the, the album that came after this is nearly as good um, they are from chech uh chechia chechia oh so i'm totally wrong c-z-e-c-h-i-a yeah that's cool I'm just spewing misinformation. Um, <laughs> but yeah, pathologists. This is some of the best carcass worship outside of that those general surgery demos that I've ever heard. Just uh, looking at the cover, I, I can tell the influence. It's just Oh, yeah, you can tell. They wear on their sleeve for sure. <laughs> and a killer necessary reissue from Extremely Rotten. This album is really hard to find in original original format but fucking great um not generally the one that i reach for when i want to hear this type of stuff but uh, super glad to have it because it's been on my radar for a very long time um pathologist super legendary anybody that's really in the grind core will probably want to talk to you about pathologists for like 15 to 20 minutes okay well my next my last two releases here are not grind. I just wanted to talk about them because I think that they came at the right time and they are very close to, and there is some grind on this stuff. Bolt Thrower and Battle There Is No Law, the early Bolt Thrower. Obviously more crust influence, more punk influence. These guys were big time friends with uh, Sacrilege and all those bands coming up, but um, it really, you know, these guys are on the Grind Crusher tour. You can't really, the early earache, this was on Vinyl Solution, but the early earache era, you really cannot be too far away from Grind. And this, there are elements of this on this and their second album in Battle There Is No Law. But um, I'm sorry, Realm of Chaos. Chromie, I'm gaining, I'm getting, catching up with you on the drinking. My brain isn't working really well, but... Um, this is a classic album. Is it a straight up grind album? It is not. And the next one I'm going to show on my next turnaround is definitely not, but it just has that feel, that spirit that I always kind of in my brain lump them into it. Obviously as bolt thrower progressed, 
they just got more melodic, not melodic, but just death metal with melody in it. Um, Four Victories is my favorite album by them. But um, this one, the cover certainly looks like a grind album. Looks like a crusty punk album, too. That yeah, record rules. It's amazing. Everything they've done favorite. is amazing. That is a favorite yeah. for sure. Yep. Nothing like the rest of their discography. It definitely stands apart. Yep. Everything <laughs> else they put out. Um. So, this I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to say the demo is better. <laughs> uh, this came out this year. This is a new one. <laughs> so this is. I'm getting dark here now. This is kind of the blackened stuff. Uh, Gravesend. So they moved over to uh, twenty bucks spin. And uh, so I got one of them when they when they dropped this last year. And the reason I enjoyed this was because this is legitimately scary. <laughs> Shit was dark as hell. And uh, I was anticipating uh, what they were going to put out uh, with their full length. And uh, I like it, but it doesn't have that sort of, um, uh, it, it doesn't have that sort of same creep factor that the demo did. Uh, it wasn't, it didn't feel as dark to me uh as, as as this did i still keep returning back to this um so i don't know if there's any grave send fans here but you know it's good band i mean i don't know what they're going to do with their uh if they're going to continue the sound but obviously moving to 20 bucks spin i kind of expected that uh with you know a little more polished production uh not as um not as dirty as something like this was but i thought i'd bring that up I don't know anything about that band. Yeah, it, again, for some it just dropped in February, and it kind of just dropped out of the conversation. <laughs> I don't know what. So black metal influence. Yeah, it's it's it's. I don't want to say black metal. It's just it's kind of kind of dark and you know moving that sort of. You can tell from the um, just from the aesthetics and the and the imagery. It's uh, yeah. It's I mean it's yeah. I, I guess I guess you could say it's. It's blackened, but not not black metal, I would say per se. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, check it you out. Know, but I, I like the demo better. They're talking about weed in the comments, so you know, when in Rome. <laughs> I can tell by the silence that nobody uh, would be familiar with that one. Uh, <laughs> if, you ha if you haven't been following the band, <laughs> I'll check it out. I like the logo. Yeah. Great, then. Eye catching logo. Definitely check out the demo. Okay. Right. Marty, did you say you just showed your last two? I've got one more. Jesus Christ, man. I, I could have pulled, more. I didn't know how crazy to go, and I, I didn't want to pull just a bunch of, you know, normal stuff or stuff that everybody knows, although I have. But I have more shit. Go for it. Don't worry about it. We'll run through until you're done. All right. Both of you guys. I'm so, going to talk about all this stuff. Ooh, killer cover. Machetazo. Ah, Spanish. Cool, yeah. With uh, Symphonius del Terror Ciego, uh, which I'm a sucker for anything that uses imagery from Tombs of the Blind Dead, um, which this does. So, like this and Hooded Menace. Actually, those are the only two I can think of. Um, this is just, you know, they're Mexican. Um, this is probably, for me, their high point. Um, I guess they get compared to like Brujeria, like old Brujeria and like uh, the band Assassino. Um, but it's just, I don't know, it, it's hard to kind of define what realm of grind these guys kind of straddle as far as a line. Um, because there's elements of gore grind, there's elements of just like straight up grind, there's elements of death metal. Um, but it's also a really fun record. Um, dare I say, upbeat for a grindcore record. Um, it's it's good. It's it's one. Of, it's if I were to compile a top ten list of grindcore full lengths, uh, that Machitazo would definitely be included in that top ten list. Um, it's just really fucking good. Uh, it's not necessarily uh, unique uh, in that. You know, if you've heard something that sounds like that, you probably can, you know, guess what it's going to sound like. But uh, it's just really 
sincere, um, not pretentious. Um, they don't really make any bones about just having fun as a band, and it really comes comes forth in that record. All their records, honestly, but like that record especially, uh, just fucking killer. They got a particular thing for those really thick riffs that I like. It's really meaty. It's the same guy behind uh, that Leprophiliac that was really popular. Uh, and then the, the Larva thing, uh, that came out. Uh, okay, I, all right. I didn't know about that that connection, but that's cool to know. Um, I dig it. I, I think it's great. It's Like I said, it's a top 10 grind record for me, for sure. All right. This is not grind at all. I just wanted to talk about this album because I love it, and I think it fits in that spirit and feel. But uh, this is Acknowledge the Confusion Master by Prophecy of Doom. I fucking love this album, but it has way more to do with crust than it does with uh, grind. But the social political topics, man, the guy's vocals is just fucking true. His vocals are just fucking crushing. Absolutely great album. Um, Again, I love that record. I that record it. be, oh man, it's so good. It's so fucking good, and the Ma- Matrix is really good too. All their shit's good, um, but this one is classic. It came out the same era as all of the uh, other stuff in the grind scene. This is on Peaceville and Death Records. I have um, that record. I bought this record from Gene from uh, Angel Corpse. Hmm. Well, he lost the gem. He did. He sold it. I, for the condition of it, I paid too much, but I'm glad to have it finally. I'm trying to find it online. It wasn't cheap. And um, this is just a great record. If you're into the English style of crusty, I don't want to say grind, although it's kind of in here in spirit, the feel, the the topics, the lyrical top concepts, very much grind spirited, but it's very crusty with death metal overtones. True you know, what, you overtones know what's weird? Crushing. That's, so that's a Peaceville record slash Deaf Records, which was a subsidiary of Peaceville yep. and Music for Nations. But like to contrast what Peaceville was putting out in that era compared to what Peaceville puts out now, which is like fucking Dark Throne and Mayhem reissues. And that's yep. basically it. That's that. what sells. <laughs> and yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. And Rick, uh, I'm just going to show this because I just love this and want to talk about it. Mortify, anybody? Japan, I think they're from Tokyo. Is that and some, uh, total? Uh, I'm thinking Mortalized, which is also Japanese. Uh, here he is holding an, an H- HM2 pedal. I like that <laughs> artwork. <laughs> Killer artwork with, with the buzz saw. Yeah, check out this uh, CD. It's got an actual, an actual buzz saw. There you go. They're not shy about it. You know, they're going for the whole like grind with but with the HM2 uh, angle with things. It's a really good sound. I mean, it's very familiar. Everybody knows the sound. You know, they kind of took that and you know, ground. You know, made it all grindy. Uh, good stuff. Uh, obliteration. They put this out, but I'm sure everybody's familiar with it. But it's cool. I don't know why they don't make a proper jewel case for this. So this is the. Um, God, I hate the slim line stuff. I just hate it. It yeah. gets lost in the collection. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the EP, and this is the most recent one, and then this is the uh, the full length that came out last year. So I got one of these guys. So if you love HM2, grind. I mean, you can't go wrong with, with this. Just so kind of like rotten sound type of feel to it. Um, it's rotten more sound like is definitely HM2 got the fat thing going on too. Well, they had that. They fucking had that album with the HM2 pedal on the cover. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a fat sound, fast, but but fat. But uh, with this, the the production's still pretty clear. It's not it's not so dirty that you can't quite make out what's you know what's going on with everything. Uh, uh, obviously, these guys know how to how to mess with the knobs. You know, there's the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Looking at the uh, twenty one track list here, so Mortify, yeah, good band. So. All right, Eric. So I think I was saying off screen when we were just kind of chit chatting before we went live that I don't really like smart music. Um, you know, take that for what you will. But with <laughs> grindcore, I like I like stupid. I like my fair amount of stupid grindcore. 
but I also like Smart Grindcore. And this is a split release with two projects that I think are probably uh, top tier as far as Smart Grindcore goes, which is um, BSR and Parliamentarisk Sodomy. Uh, both Norwegian projects fronted by the same guy um, who has a crazy name. This is the BSR side, Parliamentarisk Sodomy. Same guy who does the band Brutal, Bru Brutal Blues. Um, I don't even know how to describe this stuff. Par the Parliamentarisk Sodomy definitely uh, leans more heavily on just the straightforward grindcore. It's very politically charged, um, very current uh, stuff. This is a fairly recent split that they did. Um, it's, and the artwork is, is, is one of the sellers for sure. Uh, this J card is phenomenally big. <laughs> so it's a, the length of a baby. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. But like the visuals on here are just are rad. Um, this guy also uh, is, is the headliner or the main guy for a project, uh, which is one of my favorite modern grind projects out there. And that would be this particular band here um, called Sudoku. Yes, they're named after a, uh, a number puzzle, um, which is pretty appropriate when you hear their music. This, it's, it's like, imagine um, a grindcore band trying to incorporate kraut rock with grind. Um, and that's kind of what you get here. So there's moments that are like surfy, um, Mr. Bungley almost, um, not synthy. There's no synth in this, but like the guitars are almost not distorted, which makes it a very weird album. Everything they've done is, is, is in this vein. Um, it's very spaced out. Uh, you know, if you want a really a proper appreciation of this Sudoku record, you need to be under the influence of mushrooms or DMT, uh, because that's that's the, the the plane that you really need to kind of be up on to really like um, decipher what's going on in, in this album. It's so dense. It's not a thick record, but it's a dense record. If that makes any sense. Um, for one guy, there is so much going on on this album. It's not a drum machine project either, uh, which is something else that I really respect about this this project. Um, he's got two, or is it three full lengths and then a split full length with um, Parliamentarisk Sodomy, uh, which I've also got and almost decided to show instead of that other split. Uh, but this is like just stellar, top notch. Uh, as far as modern grind go, goes, like the this stuff is really, really forward thinking. The artwork is amazing uh, on all of their records. And, uh, is that Voyager? Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know, man. It's it's a spaceship. <laughs> it's, it's a cockpit. I mean, you know, it's it's just killer. It just looks um, like a it looks like a thinking man's album. Just just at a glance. <laughs> it's like it's like they heard the bands Eloy and Gong like Eloy from Germany and Gong from France. And we're like, yeah, we need to do that, but grindcore. And that's what you get with uh, with that fucking uh, Sudoku record. It's fucking just rad. I'm going to check that out. I'm wrapping my head around that. It's crazy. It's it's super good. Space. Full disclosure, Sudoku or whatever. Sudoku. I have Sudoku. I have never been filled with more rage than trying to figure out that stupid fucking game. <laughs> I'm angry at numbers anyway, but that game makes no fucking sense. My I'm mom really, used my to do it. Like really good at Sudoku, and I've tried it. And I lose my patience after like five minutes. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Right brain artist type. I, I don't no. get the. I can't do math. <laughs> makes me want to smash things. Anyway, Rick, you're up. Uh, so I'm gonna pull out the fun stuff. Uh, so I'm just gonna start with this. This is not something that uh, I recommend listening to. But it's just kind of a novelty. So this is a tribute to, to Lemmy, and yeah, it's all grind bands. <laughs> That's a killer. Uh, 
came in this uh yellow which you know I, I guess it goes with the whole thing but yeah i mean you got you know ace of spades killed by death now the thing about all this is that it doesn't actually sound like motorhead like obviously uh when you put it all together but so it's it's quite it's quite a racket <laughs> i don't know a better way to describe it uh but you know i just keep it around just because it's kind of cool and cool little thing that just kind of um keep around as a novelty but yeah so tribute to to lemmy done grind style that's awesome sweet eric you're back oh Wait, didn't you? Did you not go? I'm, I've shot my wad, man. I'm done. God damn it! It's all right. Don't worry about it. We're good. All right. So here's this is a, this is kind of a new one. I I wanted to show this. <laughs> this is another one of those. These are this is a new a, a current band. I don't want to say new. They've been around for some years, but um, they're current, and they have almost as daunting a discography as uh, veterans like Agathocles or Unholy Grave, and that would be. Um, Pegasus, named after the very gross meat from uh, Scotland. Are they and, are they uh, Scottish? No, they're American. But there's a very gross foot on the oh, cover. That's nice of uh, of their album. This is uh, they call themselves Mincecore. So if you're familiar with the, the sound of Agathocles or like Archagathus, which is a Canadian band who are kind of like the, you know, like fucking. Uh, uh, Kobe, Japan, is a sister city of Seattle. Uh, Archagathus would be the sister band of uh, uh, Agathocles. Um, but yeah, Haggis. Um, current shit, uh, I think they're from like Southern California. Um, cool pink tape. Um, I don't really know how to describe this other than like, it's a really good time. It's, they, you know, they have the, like the popcorn drums. Uh, that a lot of like the modern grind bands uh, utilize, which used to really annoy me, but on this recording, uh, I think it fits. Um, it's definitely gore grindy, uh, pretty gross, uh, wretched vocals. Just it's it's a fun it's a fun time. And this is a this is a great record. This is I think it's technically their first full length. They had a lot of splits and a lot of EPs prior to this, but. This would be what they considered probably their, their first full length. And as far as full length, you know, like 20 minutes. Um, just fucking great. Cool, modern shit. Um, so that's all you need is 20 minutes. <laughs> for, I mean, for this style of music, definitely. Yeah, I think anything cool. longer than that is like really overstaying their welcome. And I, the only thing that that thing is missing is a scratch and sniff cover. I wish, man. That'd be a fucking <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? addition. Come in a little what? bag. That'd be great, <laughs> Rick. Uh, I'm gonna pull something really fun. Uh, I don't know if I'd recommend buying this, but I, I looked at the cover. I, I had to get it. This band's called Vesication, and they're from uh, Canada. So yeah, okay, it's, it's gonna get fun. So this is called Total Fee Call. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at his shirt, like I'll, I'll, I'll pull out the. Uh, Actually, here's the CD. So, yeah, we all know that scene with Arnold. Uh, and so his shirt says, prepare your anus. <laughs> and the crazy thing is that this is their second full length. The, 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 the prepare your anus is actually the name of their first full length. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny because... genius. If you look up the first full length, like Google it or whatever, like... The actual artwork, it's just like this spaceship. It's shaped like a dick, and it's got like these two little balls on the side. It's got these turds flying around everywhere. <laughs> turds. So, turd, turd Ferguson's? I don't think they really, uh, just at a glance, I knew this wasn't going to be anything that's going to be uh, the thinking man's kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, 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 the vocals are like very, I don't want to say, Pig squealy, but it's gonna it's that very low register kind of stuff, you know. Uh, <laughs> you get an idea what, what you know what that's like. It's very chunky and you know, but yeah. So it sounds like uh, I don't know. It, it's 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 uh intentional poop. 
I really love the fact that you bought that album. I mean, if I saw that, I would not have bought it. Uh, I, I had to know what it sounded like. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, one, it, fucking, uh, was that that band Party Cannon? Oh, yeah. That's another one. Yeah. <laughs> Although I do like these guys better. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> I mean, how can you like anybody better than Party Cannon? Come on. <laughs> All right, so this is this is the last thing I've got, I think. Yeah, uh, sadly, I could have pulled way more. I could have uh, too. I, I guess I should have, but yeah, I didn't. This is another another modern project. This is a uh, full length from 2019. Um, I think there's something like 49 tracks on this album. It is a um, multinational uh, group uh, consisting of two members, one from I think currently the U.S. And one from Australia, um, which is Lurid Panacea. Um, this came out in 2019. Uh, one of the members, the Australian member, is in uh, Disentomb out of Australia. Uh, and then the other guy from America is from bands like uh, Detroit, uh, who are a really great power violence band. They had a split with a band called RoboCop, which was super appropriate that the band RoboCop would do a split with a band called Detroit. Um, at any rate, this doesn't sound like Disentomb or Detroit. Um, it is super popcorn, popcorn snares, um, brutal fucking gory grindcore. Uh, 49 tracks in under a half hour. So that'll tell you about how long the songs are. Um, it's just killer, uh, super energetic, dirty, uh, but it's tight, so it's it's not real sloppy, um, which is one of the things I really like about it. It's kind of a selling point for me. Uh, it was to hear something with a cover that looked like that, that didn't sound like it was falling apart at the seams, um, and that would have been cool too. But um, like I said, 2019, this album is it, it sounds like what that looks like if it were recorded well. So, uh, Lurid Panacea, great project. They've got a couple demos prior to this um, and nothing else since 2019. So, I wish they'd do more. We'll see. Uh, my Grindcore currently is super hard to keep up with. It's All like, the genres are. It's crazy. It's like, well, I think Grind specifically, it's like like the underground doom shit right now. It's kind stuff of out of the public like, eye for sure. Yeah, and it's that's it's the type of stuff that like once it comes out, it goes like that, and you have to be like on top of it to get this well, shit. It's like all the like the, the whole thing with the, the brutal the new old school death metal thing. If you're not on it when it drops, you're, like all the maggot stomp bands and Caligari bands, if you don't get on it when it hits, you're not gonna get it. You know? Right. Yeah, I noticed exactly. too with the the tape runs. They'll run like a like a hundred tapes or whatever, and then they'll rely on the the represses, you know, after repress after repress, rather than doing one big run. So, you know, it, it's hard to know if you're going to get another one. As a matter of fact, I'll I'll show one of my next one. I would, Ken. I would consider that early stuff grind. Yeah, it's that nuclear early nuclear death. Super crazy. Like, yeah. it's all over the place, man. It's, it's all like, it borderlines on noise. It exists in that realm of like where everything coalesces into like one cacophonous sound. <laughs> yeah. I saw them once. They were great live. Absolutely great. Rick, you're that was that was my last that was my last bit. That was the last thing I had pulled. Okay. Rick, bring us home. Um so what I've been enjoying, everybody's been talking about the fluids and the pharmacist, so along that area. So this is Miasmic Ooze, put out by Desert Wastelands. What's the so, name of the band? Miasmic Ooze. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it falls along that territory. Uh, again, I mentioned pharmacist fluids. Uh, th think along those lines. So it's 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 that death score grind uh, kind of stuff. I, I think this is one of the ones that uh, do it pretty well. Again, production's pretty good. The rips are really cutting. It's almost um, not even worth putting on tape. Look how little tape there is on that. Cause the rain of inflated pustulus. Yeah, it's very short. It should have been a seven inch. Short, fast, and sweet. So that's that's basically all you need. It's got all your, it's got your, 
your your gross tropes here <laughs> and everything else. Uh, but yeah, there's a ways that put this out, but it, it is an example that like you guys were talking about how stuff kind of just comes and goes, and uh, it does didn't get the the kind of attention. Uh, I mean, it was marketed for a little while and it kind of just disappeared. I don't hear I don't hear people talking about it anymore. But yeah, uh, I think Melanie as one of the few channels actually that I recall actually mentioning mentioning this. Uh, really good release. Um, I'll I'll pull another one. This one here, because because Ken's watching. Tombsday, he he actually sent this my way. So Dylan Jones rotted. This is his this is his grind <laughs> release. Uh, compiled in a file. It's great. Uh, as far as I know, they made a hundred of these. That's the problem. Like <laughs> once it's out and gone. You know, you gotta direct people to the digital, or whatever. So I'm, ho I'm hoping they do another run of this, because yeah, the more people need to listen to this. So and it has a very familiar sound. Very, very. It's got that death metal tone, you know, with 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 the uh, with with the grind playing, which I like. Awesome. Yo, is that it? No, anything else? Uh, I did pull this. Kind of just fan service because nobody brought up the name, so I, I didn't know they did a cyan version of this. Maguda grind. <laughs> the time with phobia, isn't virtual. it? That's hilarious. Yeah, um, so I know I know they were experimenting with all kinds of other bands. I didn't realize they did one with Maguda grind. Uh, great band. I mean, th there's not, and there's another one that hasn't put out anything in a while. So I don't know what, what they have planned, or if, you know, they got another release in store. But this is great. Great, great band. Actually, the um, the vinyl actually looks kind of radio radioactive. Nice. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and they play really well. Well, I guess we did it, and um, I gotta say straight up, thank you everybody again for um, joining us every week, um, getting involved in the chat, and a lot of encouraging comments in the shows afterwards again we really appreciate it you know me and alan started this we didn't know um if it would take off and people seem to be digging it so we're going to keep doing them we got some people planned some people you know this week kind of rick was planned and uh alan got sick and eric again thank you for jumping that in was the last minute i was like that guy that sits on the bench and they only let him the game in the case that like all the star players are out. On the, on the <laughs> oh, not, only, not only that, we had we had a follow up with chromium dioxide last week. That's a big that's a big spot to fill. Yeah, that was that was a fun show too. And um, well, actually, we were gonna pick a different topic if Alan was here because Alan's not really a grind guy. And um, and me and, Rick, me and Rick were talking last night or the night before and said, let's, if, if Alan can't make it, let's do grind and let's get a hold of Eric. So let's, so I wanted to, I wanted to mention, like, I hear a lot of people say they can't get into grind core, but at the same time, like are really into like death metal or like punk rock or hardcore or whatever. And it's, it's one of those things when I hear people say like, I don't like IPA beers. And like I just cringe because it's like there's so many IPAs out there that I guarantee you, Marty, I could find you an IPA you would like. I guarantee. I'm, you. I'm willing to try, but it always IPA gives me heartburn every fucking time. Yeah, it, but okay, not every IPA is going to give you heartburn. That's well, it's not a cringe. taste, huh? Okay. It's it's not a taste thing, oh Marty. It's a more just you feel like shit. I'm out not there. a big fan of the super hoppy taste either. But see, no. not all IPA is super hoppy. Right. That's the that's the thing. That's that's IPA is is literally just a pale ale that originated in India. But the same thing with grindcore. There is grindcore that is on the spectrum for what should be on the radar of any fan of extreme music, depending on where you lie. Like there's grindcore geared towards people who love black metal. Like I could think of like Watchmaker would be an example there. Like uh, they were a willow tip band back in the early 2000s. Um, there's grindcore that leans towards death metal. There's grindcore that leads toward hardcore. There's grindcore that leads toward leans toward you know crust and fucking fastcore and power violence. It's, it's all over the place. There's smart grindcore that's fucking proggy and like nerdy. Um, I didn't know until you showed that record. I need to go check that out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's there's something out there for any fan of extreme music. It's just a matter of like sifting through a lot because and it's not just 
it's not just true for grindcore. It's true for death metal. It's true for black metal, punk rock, whatever. There's a lot of there are more shitty bands <laughs> than there are good bands. Like that's just the fact of the matter. Well, it's it's in any genre. Yeah, and if you want a gateway bands, I mean, the first brutal truth, you know, Nazem. If you're a death metal head, you know, let check out later Squash Bowls. Um, there's bands out there that are very death metal in in uh, the way they sound and feel, but there's a speed element. There's you know more of a hardcore element to it. There there are gateway bands that once you connect with that sound, I think you will find. You I, know, I think there's a world 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 where, world. again, like people who may you know be into the more I guess proper musicianship about stuff, they may think grind has to be the sloppy, dirty thing that you know. It's I mean yeah, there's some of that, but there's also very technical very done well very well performed yeah very catchy stuff you know i don't know like i think i showed some of it uh and it comes from all angles uh let's go pull this musket hawk too that's this is more of a sludge grind you know uh, a sludge grind <laughs> a sludgy grind yeah so you know again there's, there's all kinds of styles yep but I do no, want to say it. before we end, um, definitely go check out Eric Bauer's channel. So give him a subscription. He's been doing it a long time. Needs more subscriptions. Does good work. Rick from Dreadful Minutes. Go check out Dreadful Minutes channel. Subscribe. Rick is also the man responsible for the Heavy Metal Urgy logo. And um, I'm just going to put this out there. I haven't talked to him about this. But if you need a logo designed or something for your uh, YouTube channel, Get a hold of the guy. I'm sure he works for good rates, and um, he's a man. He's a master oh, of his craft for sure. I could, could spare the world from one bad logo. That, that, Don't that. give away your artwork for free, Rick. Never <laughs> do it unless it's us. Then it's okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, again, I do stuff for the community. I don't mind, you know. Just well, don't, 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 don't make me a slave driver. <laughs> and heavy metallurgy. We love having you every week. We'll be back next week. Alan should return by then. And if you're just a casual onlooker, please subscribe to the channel. I hate to beg, but it helps. It helps us out. And well, you um, get notifications. You know when it's on. Yeah, exactly. You get notifications. We're typically every Friday at 9, but sometimes that changes. There's also the Saturday Slay crew that do streams. Rick is a part of those guys for sure. Um, definitely check out on every, Saturday stream. Every week, but we're on pretty regularly. More or less. Are you guys yep. going on tomorrow night? Uh, nothing planned, but anything could happen. Well, cool. That's it. Thank you, everybody. It was a great night. Good topic. Great cast of characters. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great night. Night. <laughs>